Atlas and Sparta! Hello guys, I'm the Builder and that's my 10th commentary for World of Tanks. Yep, that's right. And as bonus clip I chose something a bit more special today. Well, you use physics as good as you can. I'll just say that. Anyway, um, today I'm going in my VK1602 Leopard, a um, German scout. It's on tier 4 and has quite strong frontal armor with 50mm uh, plus slope. But on the other hand, it's quite sluggish um, compared to other scouts. On the other hand, other scouts don't have 50mm frontal armor. So this thing plays a bit like a um, sort of mini panther compared to other scouts. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate here a bit. Because this is... Um, yeah. I mean, you probably know these guys. They have their T-50s, T-52s, M5 Stewards, or the Panzer III. And what do they do with it? They just go straight on and hope to kill the artillery. 90% of the guys do that to have a decently fast tank, even if it's not a dedicated scout. The 38 and A is debatable because it's not definitely a uh, scout. And many, pe uh, many people complain about it. And they are a bit right. The 38 and A is not a scout, but it's often matchmaked as such. And yay, a tiny little rock blocks my way. More competent driver. Okay, anyway, um. 90% of the guys who have a decently fast tank like the Panzer III or any dedicated scout. I guess some even will try to do that with the Crusader or the Cromwell. And nice warning shot there. Um, anyway, yeah, any decently fast tank um, does that from time to time. Even on tier 3 there are a couple of fast tanks like the M3 Stuart, for example, or the Panzer III A. Very fast tanks, and what do they do with it? They don't flank, they don't actually scout, they just suicide with it. Because they run into five tanks at a time and then wonder, wow, how could I not survive that? With my speed they shouldn't be able to hit me at all. That tends to be true if you don't drive right into them. Well, anyway, um, scouts, any uh, the fastest tank still has some battle potential, and most people completely miss that fact. And there's something bounced. Guess it was the 40mm Bofors gun. Should actually um, penetrate me on my side armor, but okay. Nice driving there, pal. I'm sure to remember you. Because for you I have to pay compensation for your driving skills. Um, yeah. And... Yeah, dodging shells, storming the main base with the main force. That's essential. You can um, so well outmaneuver tank, but still destroy them. Without rushing through and just heading for the artillery, because that's suicide. You have to be a bit more tactical on that. Don't take too many tanks on at a time. I mean, you, you saw um, like this, I took on a single T-46, a single Covenant, a single cruiser of Mark IV. And then I'm taking on a single um, B2 howitzer. Tough little bitch to take down because of the 60mm all around armor on the hull. But lucky for me that doesn't count for the superstructure. And most people seem to miss that fact. Because they only count on paper stats, but not the tank's own little anomalies and such. Like um, the EH on Smantlet. Soaks up so much damage. Gun with a penetration of 200 millimeters, soaked up. KV, look at that. Rear engine cover. Very generous weak spot if you manage to hit it. Many KV tanks were actually um, knocked out by 5cm um, guns or similar by a point black shot to the rear into the engine cover. Sadly, I don't manage to hit the spot except for this time and one other time. Now, yeah, I bounce a lot. That's a bit annoying because the weak spot is so damned small. There's almost no way I can actually hit it. But, well, in the end I managed to hit him um, still. And, yeah. 
I hope you had fun watching this commentary, leave a comment, subscribe if you want. That's all for me, see you some other time.